Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is August 30th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. Here's the Pacific Northwest that I'm circling to the upper right of the screen. You can see our cinnamon bun off the coastline here. This actually does have a little bit of lightning associated with it approaching the Oregon coast. It may bring some light precipitation amounts with it and could kick off some isolated thunderstorm activity. And we're going to go over some of the details on that as we go through the day today and then what happens after the storm system comes off our coast line and you use the term storm kind of relative here this is not a very strong system by any stretch of the imagination and it is eventually going to start to retrograde as well which will allow a ridge to build up and across pacific northwest well up into british columbia bringing a very intense heat event for some portions of the region take a look at that as we go through the video here today and again this morning i couldn't see the lightning strikes here but i saw that there was a few strikes in here so you could hear a rumble of thunder or two to for the Oregon or Washington coast as we go through the day today. And I'll show you about the rest of the area here in a moment. And also you can kind of see how I have the National Weather Service offices outlined. This is Seattle, there's Portland, there's Medford, Pendleton, Spokane, there's Boise, Pocatello, and Missoula is over here as well. Now, if we take a look at the visible satellite imagery, you can see how we're kind of socked in here across western Washington this morning, all the way back up into the foothills. You can also see this plume of smoke out there across my eastern Oregon, up into Washington. And as this trough uh, in this system starts to pull away from the coastline, it's going to remain negatively tilted, and it could bring some of that smoke back up across places like Portland, Seattle, western Washington, up towards southwest BC over the next couple of days. That is the emigrant fire they're burning across Oregon, just producing huge amounts of smoke over the last couple days and there it is and you can see the smoke plume across eastern washington we scroll through there and you can see that that is moving back off to the northwest and that's that low pressure system pulling away from the coastline as we go through tomorrow and kind of bringing that smoke back across the region hopefully a lot of this isn't down at the surface and most of it stays aloft but you can see there's plenty of it to be had around the region now, if we take a look at the uh, the motion of that low, it approaches the coastline. Then by the time we go into Sunday night, Monday, it starts to just kind of spin out there and it starts to retrograde back out over the Gulf of Alaska. And then you can see this ridge building up across the region here. So it's going to allow us to warm up as we go on in through the upcoming week here. So we are definitely not done with summertime here across the Pacific Northwest. The first week of September is uh, you know definitely going to be a warm one. And if we take a look at the lightning strike density, so I did two hours, one hour is right there there's two so in the last two hours it was producing some lightning but if we go back 24 hours i was out here uh, looking at some of the fire areas out there yesterday towards waterville and on highway 97 watching some of the fire drops but i could see these thunderstorms in the distance across some of northwest or northeast washington pretty interesting stuff there you can see some of these were packing quite a punch probably some strong winds associated with them as well and uh, numerous lightning strikes there also in vancouver island some of southwest bc up across the higher terrain as well Eastern Oregon got those lightning strikes, and that was the one that's ongoing here this morning. So if you want your own uh, uh, thunderstorm detection system here, this one it will do it. It's a very affordable option compared to what you can spend on some much more expensive weather equipment. Click on the link down below to save 10% off on one of those. Help support the channel. And I selected this station here across from northeast Washington. This is Hunt Ranch, Northport, Washington. And you can see all the lightning activity they were getting as we went through the afternoon hours. First strike picked up was at 102. Last strike somewhere around 6 44 p.m and you can see it tells you the distance how far it was away from the station also does all kinds of other stuff including building its own forecast and whatnot so very fun weather station now here we go spokane washington late summer heat wave begins labor day weekend uh look at spokane getting up towards 100 degrees by tuesday wenatchee getting into the low 100s as well omac moses lake you're going to be warm there's lewiston idaho chelan so indeed the september heat wave is going to be upon us as we go through this upcoming week kids starting to go back to school with the heat you're definitely not not going to need any jacket in the first week of school for sure and if we look off uh, a little bit off to the uh, further off to the west there uh, and again this is western montana north central idaho the heat returns you're not going to be able to escape this as well and uh, this is the warming trend for medford they do mention medford going up into the hundreds again you can see cave junction if you're on the coast you're doing much better you can see brookings down you know lower 70s there this isn't the type of heat event that'll warm up brookings dramatically north bend on the coast as well but look at roseburg and places like lakeview warming up to the upper 80s klamath falls into the 90s here as well now 
this is a, a unique look at things here. This black line is the surface response here. So you can see this is a very weak low pressure center. And you can also see where that upper level low is aloft. And that's kind of why meteorologists call these upper level lows because they're definitely more discernible in the upper levels of the atmosphere. By the time you get towards tonight, you can barely even see the surface response of the system. But it will be spinning off our coastline here in the upper levels of the atmosphere. It makes its closest approach probably as we go through Sunday morning. And there is a chance we could kick off a couple of thunderstorms. I don't want to completely ignore that possibility. It's not a lot of precipitation, but you could hear some rumbles of thunder here across the region. And these isolated thunderstorms move across the area. Most people are not going to see that, however. And then we go on in through Monday morning. It starts to pull away from the coastline. And then you see the pinks and the reds so rudely come back across the Pacific Northwest and bring us our renewed heat as we go on in through next week, warming us up quite dramatically. Now, the European continues to show some measurable precipitation for the Oregon coast as we go through the day today could be packing some thunderstorms comes across long beach and maybe across uh, some of hoquim there so you can't rule out some rumbles of thunder with that as we go through the day today then we go through sunday it continues to show some of this come across the cascades there and why it's so important there is because things are extremely dry across the region and these lightning strikes would have no problem starting additional fires it even shows some of that coming up across the seattle metro up across everett northwest washington up towards southwest bc as we go on the day Sunday, but not many other models. I don't think any other model really is hinting at this, maybe slightly, but uh, the European has been bullish on bringing that precipitation across the region. As we go through Sunday morning, well, it could be in the form of thunderstorms, and then maybe one more little bump there as we go through Monday morning, maybe the central and northern Cascades, maybe a few more lightning strikes associated with that. Now, if we take a look at the North American model, we scroll through the same time frame. This is this morning and through today. So again, you could hear a few rumbles of thunder with that action. It's moving up the coastline here, and then we go on in through Sunday morning. And you can see a little bit, it hints at a little bit of the shower activity, maybe across the Olympics, some of the Cascades, maybe kicking off a couple thunderstorms here. And the European wants to show a little bit of that getting out over some of the lower elevations we'll see how that goes big model battle here let's see who wins this round out and then on monday you can see again it does show some of this precipitation this would be on the lighter side but could kick off a few lightning strikes as we go through sunday night and on in through early monday mornings that low system low pressure system continues to pull away from our coastline storm prediction center says that nothing to worry about here but again we saw there already is some lightning strikes off the coastline and this is the seven day significant fire potential and you can see well, things are very dry across the region so just kind of pointing that out over the next few days keep your wits about you uh, there's some new fires out there burning from thunderstorms that occurred yesterday and the previous day as well now looking at the national blend of models this is seattle 77 you can see <clears throat> well i'm at valley warming back up into the low 80s here today uh, not too bad though definitely cooler than what we have been in definitely cooler than where we are going through this upcoming week so watch this as we go through sunday monday tuesday we start to warm things up kind of dramatically across much of the region there's wednesday thursday friday and we start to get maybe a bit of a cool down as we go towards the end of the week there we'll see how that goes um, you know, it's that time of the year where this heat wave keeps, it's hard to keep these heat waves around for long. So we do have that going for us. But if we look at Portland here on the GFS, you can see we warm up into the mid and upper 90s, maybe as we go through this upcoming week here. Better than 100 plus though. So that's a benefit there. But still, some prolonged heat as we go on in through next weekend. Seattle, Tacoma, these are pretty warm, downright hot temperatures for Seattle, especially this time of the year. You know, we've been dealing with a pretty warm summer overall so far. And you can see maybe topping out again towards 90 as we go through this upcoming week, if you believe the GFS. But these upper 80 temperatures, man, I'm not looking forward to that. I am ready for fall to be here. And the European also shows that as we go through Thursday and Friday, some very warm conditions as well. And kind of keeping things pretty warm on in through the first portion of September. Here's Grant County, Moses Lake out there. Look at these 100 degree readings coming up for you know, one, two, three days in a row on the latest GFS. Here's the European. I mean, look at this for the Tri-Cities. My goodness, what a heat event coming up here as we go through the second the third and the fourth and if we take a look at the two meter temperature anomaly on the european model so this is last night so here we go another couple days that aren't too bad here for western washington but you can see things really already ramping up by the time we go towards sunday look at the interior of british columbia very warm eastern washington northeast washington starting to get above normal temperatures across eastern oregon also then look at monday i mean look at the interior of british columbia this is a significant heat event here as we go on in through september 1st northeast washington some of the cascades well above normal 
we go through tuesday yet again i mean look at this heat just settling in some places 25 or more degrees above normal for some isolated locations look at the cascades of washington just absolutely baking here compared to normal and we go through wednesday as well no exception in fact wednesday may be one of the warmer days some areas again 25 plus above normal look at vancouver island western washington we're really warm western oregon so yeah pretty intense uh heat here for this time of year no doubt and thursday i mean my goodness that com that compares favorably to wednesday there also some ridiculous heat coming in here for portions of the region no this doesn't go out to friday yet that's far enough but yeah so two meter temperature not only on the artificial intelligence model here as well let's go through to again there's tuesday look at the heat across bc and some portions of washington just ridiculous well above normal wednesday as well Thursday again, and then Friday it starts to go lay back a little bit for portions of Washington, but still very warm across British Columbia here. So yeah, pretty intense heat wave coming up here for the Pacific Northwest. And just to look here, there's Kamloops. These are very warm temperatures across the interior of British Columbia. And you can see that lasting all the way on into the end of the week. Finally cooling down maybe a little bit as we go towards the weekend. Precipitation, not a great outlook here as well. 15 days. Some of Oregon, though, above normal. Some of eastern Washington slightly above. But a lot of the west coast here from Portland up through uh, northwest Washington and British Columbia below normal. 6 to 10 day, as you can imagine, above normal signal does exist here. If you've been paying attention to this video, that should be no surprise. And there's the 6 to 10 day precipitation outlook as well. Now, this encompasses almost the entirety of meteorological summer. So this is what we been dealing with and um, you can see as you can see much of the region has been substantially above normal temperature wise you can see seattle metro right on the borderline you know one two three degrees above normal maybe and some of western oregon has been pretty warm as well you can't select a few areas that have been below but also this is kind of striking as well percent of average precipitation there you can see washington eastern washington really below normal seattle metro you know some of the coastal range of oregon all the way through southwest oregon as well very dry the only exception is across some portions of eastern oregon and idaho across some of the higher terrain and if you want to help support the channel the patreon page is a great way to do it they let creators <clears throat> excuse me uh, keep about 88 to 90 percent of what you donate to the creator so it is a very good way to do it and help support the channel pacific northwest weather watch in california weather watch and i do my eight daily updates here as well and it gives you a nice notification and if there's ever any issues with the channel or you think something happened with another hacking attempt come to the patreon page here as well because i have total control of this and i was in contact with them and they were very nice to deal with um, but yeah, anyway, watch out for some of that lightning today. Heat starts to build next week. And uh, what else? Hopefully you guys are having a good day. Click like and subscribe. We'll do this all again tomorrow. And I will talk to you guys then.